Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning in the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you even for one minute imagine what it, been, what it would have been like for our immigrant ancestors to come to this country? They left behind their homeland, their families, their friends, their livelihoods and their way of life. Many, perhaps most of them, never again saw their families. I know that was true for my ancestor, Onan Christensen. He came to this country in 1853 with his wife and his three sons. Another son was born in this country. They never again returned to Norway. They never again saw the family that they had left behind. When they came here, they had to start life completely over. They brought nothing with them except each other, some farming skills and knowledge, and their faith. All the possessions that they brought with them had to fit into a ship's stowage trunk, no larger than a desk. It was for them as if, at one moment, their life completely stopped. And the very next moment, they began a new life. They, their new life was so totally different from their former life. Just six years ago, it was a privilege of my wife, Barb, and myself to visit the house in which my great-great-great-grandfather, Onan, was born and the cabin in which he and his wife, Gary, stayed just before they moved to the United States. And finally, to worship with the congregation of which they were members in Yersta, Norway. In the Holy Gospel, we hear that Jesus had set his face for Jerusalem. You know what that meant. It meant that Jesus was now determined to take up his destiny, his mission, which was to go to the cross and die. As soon as he did this, the Samaritans rejected him, we read. Samaritans and, Jesus and the Jews did not mix because they each regarded themselves as the true Israel and the other as the false Israel. The Samaritans would have shunned anyone who set his face to go to Jerusalem. 
As Jesus traveled, he came upon a person who made a very bold statement to him. I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus' response was something like, oh, really? Will you follow me wherever I go? You have to give up everything. I have no place to call home, which even foxes and birds have. Are you sure you are ready to follow me? Jesus, Jesus invited others to come and follow him. And each in turn answered in the affirmative. They would follow him, but first they had something else that they had to do. One wanted to bury his father, and the other wanted to say farewell to those at his home. It's those buts that always cause the problems, isn't it? When Jesus bids us to come and to follow him, how can we refuse? But first, we have to do something else. Jesus' answer to those who had excuses, who attached a but to their readiness to follow him was, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. When God calls one into his kingdom, one is, to, one is expected to drop all that is one from one's former life and to begin life anew at that very moment. All is left behind. All is new ahead. Today in our culture, we look at membership in the body of Christ, a congregation, perhaps even at Gloria Day Lutheran Church as a voluntary association. We pick and choose a congregation, and maybe even what we will believe, much like we choose a new car. We kick the tires, we take it for a test drive, and we stand back and we see how it looks. And in so doing, we make a devastating error. A few years ago, I was powerfully reminded by a Jewish theologian that Christians and Jews do not belong to voluntary associations. We are both people of covenants with God. We are chosen by God to be who we are as Christians and as Jews. We are called and chosen, and we have no choice except we can either obey God or disobey God. In your holy baptism, God came to you and called you by name to come and to follow his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, wherever Jesus leads you. I know that such words are often difficult to hear. We live in a culture where, above all else, we value our choices and our options. Today in the Holy Gospel, we discover what Jesus thinks of choices and options when it comes to following him. When he calls us, he expects us to follow him faithfully. I do not know about you, but I find today's Holy Gospel very difficult to hear. Personally, it is very difficult to preach this holy gospel. The very strong temptation today in this buyer's market is for the church and its pastors to offer the Christian faith and discipleship as the best deal in town and as cheaply as possible. It's easy to want to make everything we do in a congregation and as Christians convenient and fun. In truth, Jesus wants our life and every last bit of it. We are committed to so much and to so many activities and Jesus wants us to be committed to him alone. What do I say as a pastor in the face of the be healthy or be happy health and wealth entertainment church of today? 
do I dare say, come and follow Jesus wherever he leads you, even if it is to the cross. Do I dare say that? Do I dare say that in following Jesus you must give up everything, that your whole life and that all that you possess must be committed to Jesus? Do I dare say that being a disciple of Jesus is difficult, costly, demanding, and not really fun and entertaining? Should I try to tone down the words of Jesus so that they are easier to hear? It was once said by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, when Jesus bids a person to come and follow him, he bids that person to come and die. And that means to die to all the things of this life and of this world so that there is finally only Jesus. To be, to follow Jesus is to be like an immigrant who leaves one country and enters another. You have to leave your old life behind and enter into a new life. It is as if, well, as if you died and were raised to new life. It is, it is as if you left behind a life that was headed toward death and rather began to live a new life headed toward real life. St. Paul proclaims the good news to us for freedom Christ has set us free. In this new life of following Jesus, wherever he calls us to follow, St. Paul tells us that we are now free from slavery to the seductive way of life of this world, from sin and death and the devil. And you are now free to be the person that God created you to be. And what is the life to which you were called and which is God's gift to you? It is the, a life, St. Paul tells us, marked by the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do these at all reflect the culture in which we live? Perhaps one has to leave the old life behind to realize these gifts in one's own life. The Holy Spirit has given them to you. We leave behind the material junk of life that we accumulate and really don't need, and we are given love and joy. We leave behind self-centeredness and self-concern, and we are given peace and patience. We leave behind anger and hurt, and we are given kindness and generosity. We, be, we leave behind getting even and unfaithfulness, and we're given faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We leave behind the desire to be entertained at worship and instead receive the joy that plums the depths to, of our souls, the words uttered to us by our Lord. You are forgiven all your sins. And we crave the taste of bread and wine. The Holy Spirit shapes and molds us into the servants of our Lord and servants to each other. We seek to reveal to all others the Christ who lives within us and at the same time seek to see the Christ who lives in others. People whether we follow Christ or not is really a no-brainer. The option or the question is not whether or not we find this world so alluring that we will settle for the good things when Christ calls us to the best things. When it comes to being called by Jesus to be one of his disciples, I always think of Jesus' question to Peter at the resurrection. 
do you love me? Well, that question is also for us. Jesus is asking you each day, do you love me? Do you love me enough to leave all else behind and come and follow me? Do you love me enough to see that while you have so much of the good life, I offer to you a better life, the very best life? Do you love me? It is my daily prayer that I, that you, die daily to the allures of the world, and that you are raised daily to new life in the kingdom of God. That is also God's promise given to you in your holy baptism. Today, this very day, you die to the world and you are raised to new life. A new life of following Jesus in service to that very world to which you die. It is a life of following in the footsteps of Jesus so that even as Jesus gave himself, we give ourselves so that even as Jesus sacrificed himself, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. The day, each day of your life, our Lord comes to you and he bids you to come and to follow him. How will you answer that call today and tomorrow and the next day? What are you willing to leave behind? True freedom is found not in doing what we want to do. True freedom is found in a deep commitment to Jesus Christ made possible only by the Holy Spirit. A full life is found in giving ourselves totally to God. One of the prayers for today, prayers of the day for today, not the one that we used earlier at worship, but one I like. In this prayer we pray, Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promise, which exceeds all that we can desire. God gives us that which all we can desire. As we follow his son by the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, My prayer is that daily each of you may be able to answer Jesus' call with the words, I will follow you wherever you go. And in so doing, you pass, daily pass, from death to life, the full life, the life in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.